This next guest on the Trip Sitting Podcast is Alex Wolf. Uh, Alex is uh, a really amazing guy who's got uh, a ton of really cool experiences. Um, he was uh, initially a pilot and has now launched his own company in the health and wellness space using functional mushrooms to help people feel better and feel healthier and more energized. Uh, this company is called Circadian Wellness, and the uh, product they just launched is called Eons. It's a smarter way to drink coffee. And the conversation that we had was really amazing. We talk about his journey with psychedelics and how that's helped him feel unconditional love and open up more and channel that into these businesses in order to help the world. And I really enjoyed getting to know him and having him on the show, and I hope everybody enjoys as well. So I know that you are you, so you are a pilot, were a pilot, still a pilot. <laughs> well, I'm still a, a licensed pilot. I was a, okay. an active pilot for 18 years. I flew for many different companies and had many different jobs in aviation. Um, but I haven't flown since it's almost, it's going on two years that I haven't flown. I haven't flown since basically, uh, the, the, the COVID thing started. Um, yeah. And uh, that's when I started my latest company. So it just took up a lot of my time. And But I do plan on getting back into it for fun. So I, I appreciate you asking that because it is, it is on my to-do list. And this is a, <laughs> a, a friendly reminder that I want to get back into it. Yeah, for sure. Well, so I mean, I, I guess I guess kind of the reason I, I want to get into that is obviously what you do right now has you know nothing to do with 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 being a pilot so like was was that your first job like first kind of real job that you had or how did you even initially get into that right well i wouldn't say it was my first job i i've been working since i was a, a young lad you know my dad was very <laughs> uh influential in getting me to start to work very young but my parents were a big part in getting me to be become a pilot and, and get involved in aviation and um it does play a little bit of an, a part in what I'm doing now, ironically enough, because okay. I had this, um, I had a fear of heights growing up and mm -hmm. my parents were very aware of that. And they got me to face my fear of heights by taking a flying lesson. And, uh, the moment that I, you know, the instructor handed the wheel over to me and he's like, okay, you have control. And I had no choice, but to, you know, take control of the wheel. And then all of a sudden I'm flying the plane and, I enjoyed it, you know, and it was this total shift in consciousness of going from fear to enjoyment. And yeah. it honestly was a radical shift in my whole paradigm. Uh, Cause I was like, wow, the fear was, was technically like an illusion all these years. It was all in my mind. Yeah. And uh, so that radically shifted my perspective on life. And I just became obsessed with flying and, and uh, you know, aviation was a huge passion of mine for many, many years. And um, that also taught me to just lean into the fear, whatever you're, you're afraid of, just lean into it. And that, you know, that led me to psychedelics years later when I had these, this resistance about doing mushrooms or, or psychedelic experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would just lean into it and embrace it. So it, it is all connected somehow. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So uh, that's, that's, that's a pretty good segue to, um, I guess the next thing is that, I know that you, was it your first psychedelic experience when you were in Peru for ayahuasca or had you already been introduced to psychedelics before then? I had been introduced to psychedelics with you know, magic mushrooms on mm -hmm. a recreational level. Uh, and then even with intention prior to going to Peru, uh, I had someone, a, a dear friend of mine, kind of guide me on a, a journey with intention. So, so I started to seeing the you know, the possibilities of these things. And then uh, with Peru was really another another level, a pinnacle uh, moment in my life where it was a radical, another radical shift. And mm -hmm. uh, doing that with, you know, these these shamans and, and facilitators, uh, especially in an, an epic place like Peru, it was, it was really something special. Were you down in... Um like Cusco, Machu Picchu, or are you up in uh, uh, Iquitos? We were, we were all over the place. We, we were in Cusco. We spent a bunch of time in the Sacred Valley. That's where we did a couple of the ceremonies. Nice. We, did a, we did go up to Machu Picchu as well, and uh, we climbed up there early in the morning and, and set our intention on the top of Machu Picchu to, to honestly, to, to influence the world with plant medicine and, and, and cannabis and um, 
mm -hmm. psychedelics. And so it was really, we set our intention on the top of Machu Picchu. And as the years came by, like as the years rolled out, like we, we set out to do that in the world. So it was really cool to see that all unfold, but it all really started in Peru camp. Okay. Gotcha. What was the, was there sort of a reason that drew you to ayahuasca to go to Peru in the first place? Like, where were you at in your life at that point? Yeah, great question. Um, there was definitely a, a, a calling to, to do it. I don't know how to really explain it, but I just felt called. <laughs> and uh, signs were coming up for Peru. You know, I had read this book called The Celestine Prophecy. That was a real big influence in my life. I highly recommend it to anybody that hasn't read it. It's, it's such an easy read, but mm -hmm. it really just starts to align circumstances, situations, and events in your life that they're all connected. And so Peru was on my radar um, from then. And I've been following guys like Joe Rogan and Aubrey Marcus for years, and uh, especially Aubrey Marcus talked a lot about ayahuasca. And yeah. uh, my, my best friend and mentor at the time, um, he always, he, he was a world traveler. His name yeah. was Spade. And uh, he, he was like, if you ever get the opportunity, you got to go to Peru. So that, those were like the seeds that were planted. And then when mm -hmm. the idea came up, we just jumped on it. And my, my best friend and business partner, Jeff, he was, he was instrumental in that. He was like, I had this dream. And before he could finish the, finish the sentence, he's like, we were in, and I said, Peru. And I was like, dude, I feel this. So that was on a Friday. And in, in, by the Monday, we were in Peru. So it oh, was seriously? Like, yeah. It was really <laughs> an impromptu trip. But somehow, magically, everything when we were in Peru just lined up. Like, we, mm -hmm. we were there for, for almost three weeks. And we got to travel all over the country. Um, and, you know, from Lake Tikitaka to... Cusco, Sacred Valley, Lima, we were, we were everywhere and everything was just so serendipitous. It was, it was really a, a magical, special, special trip for us. Gotcha. You've, you've, you've traveled the world quite a bit though, correct? I've traveled my fair amount, especially with my pilot days that, that helped a lot of uh, traveling. And, uh, I got to see many cool places. There, there's still some, some places that are on my must see list and my bucket list, but, uh, I've been fortunate enough to travel a bunch. Yes. Nice. Have you been back to Peru since since that first time? I haven't, and uh, I'm supposed to go in February, which you know I'm I'm very excited about, and uh, we do have some some ceremonies planned with some very special people there. So awesome. I'm feeling called again to go. Uh, I was in Uruguay in May, which has become another one of my favorite uh, places in the world, another magical country. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to going back to Peru. That's awesome. Yeah. I just went to, uh, I just went to Peru about two months ago. Um, I got back actually about, about two months ago and, and that was when I just sat with ayahuasca for the first time. Um, Amazing. just a very, a very special place. I'll, I'll say that first, obviously a very special medicine as well, but, um, I think doing it in a place like Peru, you feel so much more connected to the earth and to the culture. And I think that that plays a really, really big part in, and what you're going to get from, from those ceremonies. Like I, you know, I think it, it, it should be done in a place like that with the, with the proper shamans, um, the, you know, the Coranderos that are, are, are from that culture and, and actually like respect the medicine and respect the plants. Well said, I, I completely agree. It's a super special place and, and respect with the medicine is, is number one. You have to respect the medicine. Uh, Otherwise, you'll, you'll get very humbled for sure. But yeah, I, I agree with you. And well said. And, and good for you for, for making the track down there and, and doing it. That's, that's super cool. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yes. Um, so I guess what was the, like for you, can you, can you kind of remember what the shift was after going to Peru that first time? And basically, what was, what was that sort of integration process look like as far as kind of Alex before you went and then Alex after you came back from that trip? Totally. Great question. Thank you. Thank you for asking that. It was a, a very powerful shift. It was the first time in my life when I did ayahuasca and these other ceremonies that I became aware of my, my heart center uh, being opened up. Like I, prior to then, you know, I'll be honest, I, I was living very much in my head and yeah. I, I wasn't even really aware of what that meant to have an open heart as, as crazy as that sounds now. It was, I was a pilot, you know, and pilot is all about being 
organized with checklists and to-do lists and always thinking three steps ahead. You always got to be three steps ahead of the airplane or, or you fall behind and then you make a wrong turn or you don't have the landing set up. So it was very, that was a very much a part of my education process and my, my thinking of, of uh, moving in the world. So when I went to Peru and did the ayahuasca, I literally felt my heart open up and that was the game changer for me. And then, then yeah. that set me on to this, you know, different way of interacting in the world with, with people, with my relationships and, and then even in business. Um, and that was a, an integration process of, of going back to my head, back to my heart, and then finally finding some coherence within the two and then making choices or, or decisions only when they both line up uh, yeah. was the, was the key to, to my, successful decisions or successful choices was was getting these this in alignment but yeah. i would start to realize if i was just making choices from my mind uh they would lead me down a path that you know maybe wasn't the best it was um it was part of the journey but uh, yeah. when i made decisions for, from full alignment or choices from full alignment it was like the world opened up and and there was so many amazing opportunities and, and possibilities happening yeah. How do you, I guess, how do you know when, when you are in full alignment? Like, is there, is there a way to describe what that feeling is like? I'd say it's a feeling for sure. You just feel yeah. it. And uh, feeling I've learned is the secret. You know, we, we have a tendency to put up walls in this world to, um, you know, kind of how you alluded to earlier, people are guarded and uh, we've all had traumas. We've all been in hurt and been maybe screwed over in, in businesses and stuff like that. So we put up these walls so we don't get those uncomfortable feelings. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, yeah, feeling is the, the secret to it all. And, and yeah, having it's, I guess you could say, you just feel it in your heart and then you yeah. filter the, the questions or the, the choices that you're going to make or the decisions uh, through your heart and it'll feel good. It'll feel like this, this loving feeling and then lead the way with that. And then, you know, the mind will come into play to how to, how to kind of set that up. But I think it all starts from the heart. Yeah, no, I would, I would definitely agree with that. I think that's a lot of the, a lot of the shift that I've been going through is, making sure that and i mean not really making sure but just like you know questioning the decisions that i'm making are they coming from my head or are they coming from my heart and, and when i think of coming from my heart i mean like i want my decisions to be coming out of a place of just pure unconditional love for mm -hmm. myself and everybody else around me and understanding like am i feeling that love and truly truly really really does come down to self-love more than more than anything is is this something that I'm proud of myself and that I'm doing for me, not for, you know, not to make money, not to impress somebody else, not to make my parents proud. Obviously mm -hmm. all those things I, I would, I would love as well. But if that's the, the driving factor behind what I'm doing, it's, it's not going to be authentic and it's probably not going to work. Beautiful. Well said. I, I couldn't agree more. That's, that's literally sweet music to my ears and that I feel the same way. And that's, that's part of my integration process as well as just exactly like you said is uh, staying in that authenticity and, and, um, and leading from the heart. So good for yeah. you, Ken. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> do you, uh, do you work with any, with any coaches, I guess, like psychedelic integration coaches or, or, or therapy or, or anything like that to help you with us? I do. I'm, I'm fortunate enough living here in Austin. There's so many great coaches. It's like the hub for all these amazing coaches. Um, yeah. so a bunch of them are, are just my friends. So I get to hang out with them and, <laughs> and, uh, absorb and download from them and, and on, uh, you know, on a friend level. So that, that's been such a blessing. And, uh, I've worked with, a an amazing coach called, uh, named Charles Clay. He was, uh, mm -hmm. instrumental in me here moving to Austin and he's become a good friend. And uh, now I'm working with, uh, an amazing coach named Garen Jones. And this guy has been so, such a, such a blessing in my life and he he's uh he he definitely preaches and, and talks about uh, unconditional love like you mentioned and that's been my biggest integration um this year is is showing up in the world with uh unconditional love and as you mentioned for myself for my friends family for my team for everyone really is just yeah keep showing up with unconditional love no matter no matter what and that's that's been a total game changer that's awesome um for 
I guess kind of just transitioning a little bit. So right now you are running circadian wellness and I guess eons, which is part of circadian wellness. Correct. Yeah. So circadian wellness is an umbrella company that we've created for all sorts of wellness brands. And eons is our first brand that we're bringing to the market. We launched a few weeks ago in Miami at the Wonderland conference. Thank you. uh, I'm going to ask you about that. (laughs) Yeah, it was awesome. We are distributing now in all 50 States and we'll be launching in Canada and Mexico uh, before the end of the month. So that's, it's very exciting. Um, so yeah, Eons is, is our baby right now. It's my, it's my pride and joy. It's, it's something I'm super passionate about. We're, we're doing our best to become that big, safe and trusted name in mushrooms. And, um, we have a lot of amazing things coming out. We just launched our, our first, uh, hero product with his, which is the, the smart mushroom coffee. It's a smarter way to drink coffee. And uh, yeah, we're super pumped and, and super happy with uh, the feedback so far. So with that, with that coffee, the functional mushroom coffee, I guess like what, I, honestly, I, I, I sort of know what functional mushrooms is for the most part. Like it's um, mushrooms that support different functions within your body that I think we've probably been told that um, modern pharmaceutical medicine is supposed to be able to do, or we just don't understand ways to do this. So I guess what's, how do you decide which functional mushrooms go into this coffee? Like, what is it supposed to support that normal coffee you just can't do, or that you know essentially something else that I can't find on a pharmacy counter can't do? Great question. Yeah. So, so as you know, Cam, mushrooms have been around for for eons, for uh, millions and millions of years. And There's the name. They, yeah, hence the name exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I couldn't help it there, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Functional mushrooms have actually been around in health practices dating back to ancient China, ancient Egypt. So they've known around, they've known about them for a, quite a long time. And um, there is lots of data to actually show that they can have ex- tremendous health benefits and they can, act- they can actually affect every part of your circadian rhythm. And mm-hmm. everything that's alive in the world, plants, fungi, humans, animals, they're all connected to this circadian rhythm that's connected with the sun. And um, the more that we can connect to that circadian rhythm, the more we'll be in, in harmony in our life. And we've gotten very much away from that um, because of the way, you know, the, the matrix, the system is set up. And um, so it's just about getting people more familiar with taking mushrooms that have been around forever. They're completely legal. They're yeah. non-psychoactive. And as you mentioned, they can help all these parts of your, your health. So just to get people feeling better on a daily basis, uh, starting with, you know, either a, a good night's sleep, which is a sleep product that we're going to be coming out with. That's, that's very exciting and disruptive to the space. And, uh, but the first way that we wanted to introduce the brand to the public was with, uh, Eon smart mushroom coffee, two thirds of Americans drink coffee. They're already starting to get familiar with mushrooms and coffee. You know, there's some other, there's some other great brands out there that are doing that. But we wanted mm-hmm. to create a, a smarter way to drink mushroom coffee. So we've made this amazing formula uh, with 12 different adaptogens and nootropics in there to counterbalance all the negative effects of caffeine. So we've got L-theanine in there to, to, to calm you down and, and take away the jitters and put you in that flow state. Yeah, uh, There's three different uh, mushrooms in there. Cordyceps to give you energy all day without the crash of the caffeine. There's shaga mushroom uh, for your your gut health and then connect you um, to, for the gut health and uh, lion's mane for cognitive function. There's ashwagandha root in there. There's there's a bunch of good stuff and it's a it's a really good formula where the feedback's been phenomenal. And this would like I said, this is our fun way to introduce uh, the brand to people. So we launched it at Wonderland. We were giving out coffee the whole weekend. People were loving it, and uh, it was just a great way to interact with people and, and, and meet people with uh, with the brand. That's awesome. Have you have you yourself always, I guess, typically been a coffee drinker? Yeah, that was the thing. Being a pilot, you know, it's like religious to drink coffee. Uh, it's, yeah. it's very much part of the culture. But you know, it was after a cup and a half, two cups, I'd start getting this anxious feeling and get very much in my head. So it was like we had. That's yeah. what inspired us to like come up with a smarter way to drink coffee. And uh, we feel we've done that. Uh, the people are, are agreeing with us, but yeah, very much. So we, our team loves coffee and we didn't want to mm-hmm. take coffee away from people. 
um because people love it and you know if, if you want to get off caffeine that's great but I, I feel like there is some health benefits to, to coffee and caffeine as well uh there's yeah, data 100%. that shows that antioxidants and all these things so it, it's really a, a smarter way to drink coffee that's awesome i guess what's can you can you i guess tease us past the the nighttime drink that you guys are coming out some other things that you guys have in the works yet yeah, for sure. So I'll, I'll, I'll drop it here. You know, I, I don't mind giving you guys that uh, golden nugget, but we're, <laughs> we're launching our uh, smart mushroom gummies in the next uh, 10 days. We're going to be launching them at Art Basel in Miami. We're doing some really cool events at Art Basel, which is uh, a dream come true for me. I'm a big art fan and uh, it's going to be really cool. We're, we're going to have uh, something really special. I'll, I'll allude to a little bit. We're going to have this really high tech device that's going to pop up at these these events and these parties, and that's going to be uh, distributing mushrooms in a really mm -hmm. cool way that's never been done before. Uh, functional mushrooms, of course. Um, yeah. But it'll also allude to like one day when psychedelics are hopefully legal, um, mm -hmm. that there'll be these machines that can can distribute um, maybe even psychedelics one day in a very safe and regulated way, uh, in a responsible way. Uh, and they'll be microdosing, but that it kind of just shows like the possibilities of the future. Uh, but we're doing it now with functional mushrooms, uh, with the smart mushroom gummies, which is a smarter way to eat gummies. You know, Americans love gummies, very popular here. So, but we wanted to create a healthier way to um, to consume gummies. There's they're sugar free, and there's a bunch of nootropics and adaptogens in there as well, and uh, they taste great. You know, especially for sugar free gummies, they they taste really really good. And there's a sleep yeah. formula in there that works phenomenal. Um, so that's going to be our, our introduction into the, the sleep space. And nice. uh, there's a com there's a common focus gummy as well, because um, a lot of Americans are, are dealing with anxiety. So it, it's just going to help calm the anxiety. And uh, that's paving the way for our next line of products. Um, that's actually how we started this company was. We wanted to, well, I'll backtrack a little bit. So mm -hmm. my previous company uh, was called Shop CBD, and it was a CBD platform uh, distributing all across all 50 states. We had 35 of the biggest CBD brands in the country on there. And uh, CBD was great. You know, it was, it was a great learning experience, and I got to meet lots of cool people. But the biggest feedback that I got from CBD uh, from the clients was that they weren't sure if it was working or not. They yeah. would get saying like, yeah, I think I feel more chill. I think it's working, but I don't really know. And I was like, man, what's what, what's up with this? And we found out that CBD actually isn't very bioavailable, um, which mm -hmm. means it, it doesn't absorb in the human body very well. So I was like, okay, on our next venture, we want to come out with something that's very bioavailable uh, and give yeah. the consumer a validation experience. So you take this molecule, you get this result. So we went yeah. out and we, we uh, acquired uh, 26 different patents around bioavailability, specifically for mushrooms, and created the Eons brand so we can come out with products that are highly bioavailable and give the consumer that validation experience. So we're able to upload the molecules of the, in this case, the fungi, into human bodies better, faster, stronger, Mm -hmm. um, and where there's going to be a whole line of products coming out with this super uh, bioavailable science. And that's where we're really going to merge the, the science of the bioavailability and the nature and that, that harnessing power of mushrooms and really disrupt the space. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to be a really exciting uh, time and, and people are going to really get to experience the power of, of functional mushrooms in a way they've never experienced before. Do you think that most let's just say Americans, just because that's what I'm more familiar with. And that's where we're at. Do you think that we're skeptical of these functional mushroom products coming out? Because they're, I mean, I, I'd say over the last two years, there's been quite a few brands that I've seen popping up now that are touting functional mushrooms and they're definitely getting bigger. I don't know if they just have, you know, bigger marketing budgets now, but, um, you know, it's, it's definitely still not mainstream. I, most people I know are still, not making the switch to it. It's really the people that are very, very into health and wellness that are doing it. And sometimes I'm not going to lie. Those people just look like they're going a little bit over the top, um, mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to a point where it's hard to take them seriously as well. So 
I guess, how, how do you see this skepticism and, and basically like the education aspect being important with, with, with the launch of these products? Another great question. And you're touching on a lot of important points there. So I'd say start off. Yes, people are always skeptical of what they don't really know or understand. So mm -hmm. how do you change that? You touched on it again, education. Education is a pillar of this company. And uh, we're going to be doing a lot um, to educate people freely and show them that there is lots of data and science around functional mushrooms. Like I said, they've been around for eons. And we're going to you know, drive that point home that there, there's nothing to be afraid about. There's really nothing to be skeptical about. Yeah. Um, and we're going to come out with amazing products that people are already somewhat familiar with and less skeptical, you know, so like for my mushroom coffee, for example, it's, it's a big, it's a big trend and it's a big wave and, and we're going to, we're going to ride that wave as well and, and come out with, you know, products that, that help people uh, feel better on a daily basis. And, and then word of mouth kind of really just spreads from there. And like you touched on, it's the, it's the biohackers, it's the, it's the, the real health and wellness people that are, are leading this trend, but yeah. they are, Early they doctors. are really the, exactly. And they, they really are the trendsetters in wellness. And I see wellness as the future. Um, people, especially what's happened over the last couple of years are really starting to put more value into their health and wellness. And we're seeing a lot of, a lot of investment come into the wellness space as well. So, and I, I, I believe the timing is perfect with functional mushrooms and this wellness wave that is not going to go away and uh it's just going to become more and more popular and, and more and more of a thing in, in people's lives and the way to do that uh is through branding and, and products that that work you know uh, appealing to yeah. the masses and then giving them giving the consumer uh or the people uh some education around it and then give them a great product that actually works and they're like wow i took this coffee, I, I feel great, or I, I took this sleep gummy and I had a great sleep and now I can go and, you know, be the best version of myself uh, today, or at least get them in the right direction to do that. So uh, I think you touched on a lot of the important points there. Um, but I also will say, like, I've seen a lot more skepticism in the cannabis and even CBD space than I'm feeling yeah. with mushrooms. People are, are they're getting open minded to it. They're ready for something else. Their trust maybe isn't there with, with pharmaceuticals as much as it used to be. Um, and, uh, Rightfully yeah, so. Yeah, right. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. And it, it's all part of it. You know, it's part of this consciousness that, that's awakening. And, um, you know, people like Paul Stamets uh, and Michael Pollan did a wonderful job with uh, coming out with great documentaries, exploring this stuff. And I think it's, I, I believe it's just the beginning camp. Yeah. One of the things that uh, that you kind of mentioned earlier is, uh, I mean, obviously there's there's been thousands of years in which humans have been documented using functional mushrooms in their daily lives to make them better. When I think of that, I definitely think a lot more of Eastern cultures and, and Eastern medicines. And so I don't really know the history of it. Do you know if there was ever a time, I guess, in Western civilization, specifically kind of where we are in the United States, where we've been actually using mushrooms and then got away from that? Or has it never really even made its way into, you know, American society? Yeah, I would say, I don't know. I don't know if it's been yeah. a, a part of American society or not. I, I'm with you. I believe from what my understanding and research, very much a part of Eastern culture and uh, with Egypt and Africa as well. Uh, I've had yeah. some amazing mushrooms from Africa. I think even um, South America too. I know that the the Aztecs, there's been a lot of, I guess you know, worshiping of of mushroom figures before, which which leads you to believe that, obviously they, I mean, probably more so psychedelics, but you know, could be could be other types of of, of functional mushrooms that were a lot of you know part of their society. I agree. I, I believe, and that, that that actually, yeah, I stand corrected. I, I have seen stuff from Mexico as well, which is I guess considered North America, Central America, um, but as far as like. United States and Canada, I would only be guessing in, uh, you know, Native American tribes and stuff that they use it, but I, it's a guess. I, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. So I want to move to, I guess, to kind of that, that, that psychedelic space. We just, we just had a bit of a, uh, bit of a connection issue, which, uh, which happens as we are both traveling and doing stuff. But the last thing I asked was specifically surrounding, um, your microdosing protocol 
and how that plays into Eon's smarter way to drink coffee. Right. Yes. So I am a, a big fan of microdosing. I, I'm on a microdosing protocol, five days on, two days off. I love the way that it just makes me more aware of, of my my inner self, my body. I get more awareness in my body, opens up my heart center, emotions, you know, and emotional stuff is coming up, it bubbles up, and then I'm able to address it head on and, and lean into it and lean into any resistance. And this helps the way that I show up with my friends and family and my team. So I'm, I'm a big believer in microdosing, especially under the right protocol. I do believe protocols are very uh, instrumental to them and not just taking a microdose with, without a protocol. Uh, and I work with someone that's been um, doing microdose protocols for years, and this has been extremely helpful. And then when it comes to eons, we're, we're very much a functional mushroom brand for now, but in tandem, um, we're gonna start seeing uh, some eons microdosing products come out in, in countries where it's completely legal uh, because it is yeah. our, yeah. it is our intention to um, break into the psychedelic space and become leaders in the psychedelic space. Whenever that does become legal here in the United States and, and Canada and, and Mexico, but uh, there's countries right now where it's completely legal and we want to bring safe and trusted products and protocols to those countries uh, on a microdosing level. I don't know if we'll ever actually do macro dosing or, or large dosing products. Um, I feel like there's a tremendous amount of responsibility that comes mm -hmm. with that. And uh, I, I don't know if we'll ever be on yeah. board for that, to be honest. But when it comes to microdosing, I feel it's very manageable with the right mm -hmm. protocols. We have these protocols and we're going to introduce them starting in Jamaica in January uh, with these um, with these high tech uh, machines that I was referring to. I won't give any spoilers, but uh, they're, they're super cool. And uh, <laughs> you're going to see them come out here in our, in our Basel. It's going to be very fun. So tell me, I guess, how did you initially start with microdosing? Like when was that first introduced to you? Right. So microdosing, I had learned about a few years ago when I was living in uh, Los Angeles, California, and there was an article that came out. I don't remember the publication, but it was, it was a pretty big magazine. I don't remember right now, but it was a magazine that, that started this article saying that, uh, executives and, and uh, and management teams were, were starting to microdose with LSD. Yeah. And, uh, so that's that specifically, I, I, I think I know exactly which one you're talking about. And it's, and it talked about a lot of Silicon Valley companies specifically. Correct. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, that was the, the buzz around the office cooler at, at, uh, at my office. And, uh, so that's, that's what's piqued the interest. And then I had met some, some cool gentlemen in, in, uh, California that introduced me to microdosing. And that was my initial start, but that was, to be honest, there was no protocol involved back then. Yeah. It was just uh, kind of cowboying it. And then, <laughs> uh, and but then I, I got introduced to some, uh, some very knowledgeable people when it came to protocols. And I, I started a, a mushroom uh, microdose protocol and that was a, a game changer for me. Did you ever and, initially uh, start it, trying microdosing with LSD or, or was it always mushrooms at least? Yeah, no, I, I tried microdosing with LSD as well. And I'll be very honest here on the podcast, you know, I, I'd even show up to meetings on microdosed LSD and all this kind of stuff. And I was fully functional at these meetings. And, you know, I, I was getting all these downloads during the meetings and all this stuff. And it was, it was, it was fun. It was a, it was a different way to experience a work type environment. I definitely wouldn't recommend it to everybody. Uh, <laughs> I was getting way too excited sometimes and, and way too, um, yeah, just way too stoked for things. I would look back the next day and be like, wow, I, I, there was a lot of exclamation points in that email that didn't need to be there and stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, it, it was fun. And it showed me that microdosing is very manageable, like to be able yeah. to show up in these social settings or, or work settings and uh, just be more tapped into your, your complete self was was really interesting and it was and it was it was a fun time um but then i i took i started taking it more seriously and intentionally. Uh, yeah intentionally exactly and that's there was there was definitely some learning curves there as well like i it wasn't all 
it wasn't all peaches and cream. There was some some times where I was like, okay, I got to start doing this with intention and, and start yeah. taking this more responsibly. And and now it's it's definitely um, it's definitely integrated. Do you still use either mushrooms or or LSD in a in a recreational way as well, or is it now pretty much strictly just for microdosing protocol? Well, I wouldn't say recreationally anymore. It's more of a definitely with intention, uh, more on a ceremonial type of way. And I've already, to be very honest, I've already, you know, I've checked off that box of recreational use with uh, psychedelics. And I, I've been humbled um, a couple of times where it was a, it was like, okay, I, I this isn't, this isn't fun and games. This is uh, this is yeah. sacred medicine, and uh, yeah. I had to learn that, and it was real. And uh, so which which makes me want to be very careful and very responsible when bringing these these medicines to the world. So I felt like I kind of had to go through that, um, so that you know, if eons or if and when eons ever does bring out uh, microdosing psychedelics, there's protocols and there's there's a lot of responsibility and, and respect around it. But I, I will uh, I will share that I do about I do at least you know, I do around one ceremonial um, you know hero dose or or larger dose or threshold dose whatever the terminology is of mushrooms mm -hmm. uh, about once a month to really just humble myself and yeah. um, integrate and and um, yeah and just really tap into the mushroom medicine i there's an inside joke at our, our company that the the mushrooms are the ceo and uh, <laughs> we're all we're all working for the mushrooms you know and we're just uh ambassadors you, to the fungi the, it's like it's like it's like they're 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 working through you guys you got it exactly <laughs> so that and in order to do that you know we have to participate with them or at least i do i don't it's not an obligatory thing that everybody has to take mushrooms or anything it's it's encouraged irresponsibly but um, everybody at their own time, you know, everybody grows at their own rate. And, uh, but I, I do like to uh, stay in touch with that, that fungi frequency. And, and uh, it reminds me uh, to stay humble and stay grounded and, um, you know, keep getting, keep getting the codes from, from the mushrooms. Yeah. Have, have you had any, I guess, kind of transformational experiences in your life? without psychedelics I, I mean anything that might have happened that kind of looking back on it it almost kind of had that same profoundness as some of the psychedelic experiences that that spurred that transformation or, or, or spurred that change that you're willing to talk about yeah i'd say one of them was just getting into breath work breath work was i got to experience what was like a psych psychedelic experience just through breath work and uh, that's why I, I loved when you, you started off this call with the, the box breath exercise. Like I do breath work every day. It's part of my daily disciplines. And so breath work was a big one. And then inco incorporating breath work with these protocols has been tremendous. And another one that I, I'd highly recommend to people is cold therapy as well. Um, I have a ice bath set up in, in my house and uh, that's been very profound as well. Like just leaning into that cold. Um, I've never done that before. <laughs> oh, you love it, Cam. It's a game changer. <laughs> it? I'm told it releases DMT as well. So it is considered like a, almost like a psychedelic experience. And yeah. Yeah. So between breath work, microdosing and cold therapy, that's like my biohacking stack that I do every day, pretty much every day, five days a yep. week. And uh, it's been a total game changer for me. When you do the the once a month, you know, larger dose uh, mushroom journeys, are those typically in group settings, or do you ever do those just by yourself, or do you kind of switch it up just depending on the vibe? Yeah, I, I switch it up. There, there's definitely some that are by myself, and I'll I'll write out my intention, and I have sort of a whole ceremony ceremonial type protocol that's been handed down to me from from some facilitators and i've also worked with facilitators i've worked with you know quote unquote shamans and um i i'll participate sometimes with with a friend or two uh less is is more i find with these type of uh journeys mm -hmm. uh, just quality over quantity and and um i've, I've also done journeys with you know 
over 20 people uh, in a facilitated space as well, which can be very powerful and very, very intense as well. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. And it it was, uh, yeah, it's, you know, not something I'd recommend for everyone, but if you're, if you're called to that, it can be a very powerful experience and very connecting with, with people. And, um, but yeah, I like to mix it up, I guess you could say. And, uh, but the key word, like you mentioned, is, is always with intention and, and with respect. Yeah. And a question that I definitely had for you is as you've kind of gone through this journey of, you know, being a pilot and then, and then getting into business, what was, what was that transition? Like, had you always been interested in starting your own business and running your own business? Had you been doing things like that before? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love for you to just talk about it. Yeah, sure. So that is a very integratable question. Cause there was, I was a pilot and, uh, for many years. And then I, it was always a dream of mine to get my own airplane, which I, which I accomplished back in 2009. I bought a Cessna uh, with my business partner with our intention to, to start a business around aviation. You know, it was, uh, it was a dream of ours to, so we came up with this idea for uh, aerial advertising, you know, like uh, we were in Miami beach and we saw the planes going by with the banners uh, promoting the nightclubs and this kind of stuff. And we, mm-hmm. We thought, um, you know, why isn't anybody doing this in Canada? Even though I was living in Florida at the time, we saw an opportunity in, in Canada to do it. So we bought an airplane and we started this this company. Um, and that was my introduction into the entrepreneurial world. So it was like, that was the crossover between aviation to entrepreneurship. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we, we exited that company. We sold it to our biggest competitor and that, and that was great. And then I invested in real estate and other things. And then I just got back to uh, flying as a, a job. You know, people would pay me or contract work. And then I became a, a corporate pilot. Um, and the corporate pilot world opened up my network to a lot of um, high net worth individuals and, and other business leaders. So I, I, it really got my, my foot in the door with all these high level meetings and investor mm-hmm. meetings and all these cool things. So I still had the entrepreneurial spirit. And then I, but I was able to access it as a pilot, uh, which, as you can imagine, I got a lot of respect from being a pilot. People were they, yeah. they admired this, and it was uh, it was a good way to meet people. And then that's what, uh, after my uh, my journey in Peru, we set out an intention to um, conquer the cannabis space. We wanted to bring plant medicine to the world, and we saw cannabis becoming legal in Canada. So we started a, a cannabis company in uh, in Canada, and that was my uh, jump back into the entrepreneurial world. Had had cannabis at that point always been a part of your life, or was that a new thing that you were also getting into? Yeah, cannabis had been around in my life for quite some time on a on a recreational use and therapeutic uh, uh, well, excuse me therapeutic use. <laughs> I also had. A, a medical um, license to smoke cannabis um, provided to me by my doctor. So I, I was doing it on a, a on a legal way even long before that it became federally legalized um, because it was it was a, a healthier way for me to relax. I found than than taking some other medicines or, or drinking alcohol. Yeah. And uh, so I did have this relationship with cannabis for quite some time. Um, I thought it could really help people at least give them an alternative to alcohol. Yep. And that's why I was very passionate about it. And I'd also seen it help people um, that were struggling from illness, even from cancer and stuff like that. I, I did see it help a lot of people over the years. So I was passionate about that, including the members of my own family. It helped them drastically. So I, I was very passionate about the cannabis space. But then I, um, I outgrew that relationship. You know, I stopped smoking weed uh, a couple of years ago and just fell in love with with clarity again and and just being clear yeah. and uh i i'm so grateful for cannabis it was a tremendous you know teacher and 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 guide in my life but i'm also so grateful that that relationship is is over to be honest and uh yeah. mushrooms has become such a, a powerful teacher in my life and i'm 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 all about the mushrooms now yeah so with having such a you know just transformational journey in general that's what that's what life is at the end of the day but if you could 
if you could go back and, and give your younger self any sort of advice right now, what do you think that that advice would be? Wow. Great question. Um, well, I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. So, you know, I'm very grateful. I had a feeling you were going to say something like that. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like, I would love to go back and, 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 you know, tell my younger self, hey, you know, invest in, in this or, <laughs> you know, or bet on this team to win the World Series or something like that. One of those kind of back to the future moves. But um, everything really just happened for a reason. So some of my, my greatest, like, trials and tribulations were my biggest teachers, you know, and, yeah. and sometimes you just got to learn the tough way. And uh, that, that makes you tougher as a person. And it's, it could be a tough world out there. So all these lessons were so valuable. It's a really good question. Cause you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for all those lessons now, but, um, and then even the things, you know, like I had a, I had a, a lot of fun in my twenties. I, I, I would, I would, party with my friends and all this kind of stuff. And I, I would like to say, go back to myself, just be like, Hey, just like get more focused and, and mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't spend so much energy and in, in all that, uh, that fun stuff. But when I look back, like those were, those were good times. And, and, and I, I feel like I got that all out of my system now too. So it's not like I'm tempted yeah. these days. Like I don't, I don't consume alcohol anymore. I don't drink, I don't smoke cannabis anymore. So it's like, I feel I've checked those boxes. So there's nothing tempting me. Yeah. So once again, it's like kind of like a blessing. I went through that in my twenties. So then I don't feel like anything's tempting me now with that stuff. Cause now there's a lot more on the line, you know? So yeah, I guess that's, that's my answer. Cam. As you, as you, as you level up and get the clarity and I guess the responsibility that comes with it. Um, I mean, you always realize everything in life happens for a reason. I think, again, I'm 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 not that old at this at the, at this point in my life, but all of the trials and, and tribulations that I've been through as well, I know that. I mean, without those, I wouldn't be where I am today, and um, I can't, you know, without that lesson, what you know, what what would have changed? There there needed to be some way for us to to, to be able to learn those lessons. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, when I look back, that I mean, the only thing I would say is I wouldn't change anything. I would just, I would just tell myself just to just to love yourself more, mm. um, which yeah. we could always use more of. That's what I tell myself. I think every single morning during my during my meditations is reminding myself of of feeling that self love. And sometimes it's very hard. Mm. Sometimes I still have a lot of my mind is just wandering all over the place and you know, just sitting with that thought of just, okay, like I realize, like my mind's wandering right now and I can't get, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble accessing that and just going through the day with that, but not trying to do anything to get rid of it. Just sitting with it, sitting with the mm -hmm. discomfort. Beautiful answer. I love that answer. And thank you for sharing that. And I would go back and tell myself that too. That's a great answer, man. It's all about love and unconditional love is the, the secret to everything. So well said, my man, that's, that's awesome. Well, Alex, I very much appreciate you uh, coming on the podcast. And um, obviously, you've got Circadian Wellness, which is the overarching uh, umbrella company. And Eon's just launched, and you're going to have a couple other uh, launches happening soon. So I'm excited for that. I'll also link to all of those in the notes of this podcast so everybody can go take a look. And yeah, thank you so much. It's uh, It's been an amazing conversation. It's been a blessing. Awesome, man. Absolutely loved it. Thank you, Cam, for all, we, all you're doing. And it's been a total blessing. So thank you so much for having me on here. Thank you again to Alex for joining me on the podcast. If you are interested in eons, I will be linking to everything, as I said, in the footnotes of this podcast. So go check it out and go follow Alex on Instagram to see what uh, he's up to. And thank you to everybody for tuning in and listening. And we will see you for the next episode.